Welcome. The long wait is over, so now you can see what we've been working on and what we've been releasing today. We've expanded the range of the one series of uh, ultimate point source loudspeakers with three new monitoring speakers. We have the 8351B, which is an updated and improved version of the 8351. We have the 8361A, which is a bigger version of the ones. And we have the W371 adaptive woofer system, which combines with the ones loudspeakers and makes a main monitor experience, adding extension in the low end and also higher output capacity. So we're here, this is Facebook Live, which means you can write your comments to me, to the team underneath the video, and uh, I'll be able to answer some of those for you uh, live. Uh, we'll get an answer typed for all of them. And uh, please invite your friends, uh, send us likes. Um, yeah, so my name's Darren Rose. My day job is uh, I'm one of the electronic designers for Genelec, but for tonight I'll be the host at this event. And uh, where we are is we're at Metropolis Studios in West London. This is a fantastic building that was built in uh, 1900, originally as a power station for the trams of West London. In 1989 it was refurbished as a studio complex and they've had uh, clients including Queen, U2, Adele, Rihanna, plenty of others. And tonight it's playing host to our launch event. This afternoon we had uh, a press unveiling of the, of the new uh, loudspeakers and right now we've got VIPs in the house we've just had a, a few wonderful presentations telling them all about what we've got and I'll, we'll be talking with Aki and Thomas from Genelec for some more details about this and then hopefully we can get some people to come in and share their experiences of the listening with you but uh, but for now just to get you into the mood what I'd really like to do is uh, show you a video that we made just to show you what, what the event is. So uh, when you're ready. Welcome back to the live part of the uh, live stream. And we've got Thomas Lund, senior technologist with Genelec, and, and your specialist is uh, psychoacoustics, perception. Yeah, perception. And right. Yes. So uh, I followed your presentation earlier, and one of the things I, I really found interesting was when you talked about how young children learn to locate sounds. So mm -hmm. will you tell us a bit about that? Sure. So when we're born, over the first couple of years, actually the first two years, we really learn all these basic mechanisms about localizing. So for instance, the eyes automatically turn to a sound and right. actually even before we are born, of course, the hearing comes online. So all of that, the combination of senses and how movement is always involved both in hearing and seeing, that those are sort of relatively new discoveries, but right. they also influence how we are listening when we are pro professional So listeners. what kind of listening cues are we, are we receiving that, that tell us where a sound comes from? Um, in a room, of course, we hear direct sound. So when we're talking together, I hear sound from your mouth and mm. vice versa, but we also hear reflections all around us. And the important thing is that basically all natural sounds, all, you could say all high frequency sounds, everything about above 300 hertz typically originate from just one location and at some particular point in time. 
And of course, this is not how normal loudspeakers do because we have three-way designs with this place. Separated in yes. space, yeah. yeah. So, that's, um, <coughs> so that's why we would be looking to make a point source loudspeaker because it's a much better uh, recreation of the natural sounds that we hear. Yes, because of course for the natural sound, I mean, we hear direct sound from each other, but with the reflections also. And the reflections are natural because, again, they come from one location. And the moment we start having different locations for high frequency and mid and low frequency sounds, we sort of make uh, a mess of the reflections, even though the direct sound might be okay. Yeah. And you, pre you presented uh, like a listening test there. We, we, can't, we can't really show it now, but um, we, 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 can, we, can, we can talk about that, mm. actually. So what comparisons were you making? I, I took... Um, in an anechoic room, for instance, the point source designs against a traditional high quality uh, loudspeaker. And by turning it in different angles relative to the microphone, we could hear how the two different designs were spreading sound into the room if it was natural or not natural. And, I, and right. you heard it, so you can. Right, right. Yeah. So what, what happened was when, when we compared the 8331 recording, both uh, vertical and horizontal. Um, the sounds were quite similar to each other, this, this noise, the tonality was very similar. Um, very similar to just the actual kind of un, untreat, uh, unprocessed uh, noise sound. Yes. And then when you played us the sound from a, a traditional three-way with, with distinctly separated drivers, well, uh, the, the sound was very different in timbre, uh, whether it was you know, horizontal or vertical. And they were both very different from the original sound. Yes. And that is, of course, the type of sound they would spread into the room more or less randomly. So, so with that type of design, you might get lucky if you have a good room or a very dead room, you may not hear those reflections or those very colored reflections. But if you have a normal room, they would play a big part in what you're hearing at your main position. Yeah. So I think it's very clear now uh, why it is that we're interested in, in, in producing a, a point source yeah. loudspeaker. And, and we've proved that it makes a difference. It does. And I mean, everybody hearing it in a good room, they can hear that's, that's a natural sound. And uh, so by, for instance, now taking, you could say what we could do before with the 31 and the 41 and also the 51A, we could listen to at relatively close distance because they didn't have that high output capacity. But now when we can move further away from it, we can hear that they even excite big rooms very nicely. Right. So that's a new experience. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, thank you very much, Thomas. And um, if you've got any comments, any questions, um, please uh, please keep typing. And actually, it sees that we already have. Tensong Repper has asked, he would like to hear a comparison with an S360. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one, because S360 of course, it's a two-way design, mm. and you wouldn't normally listen at a close range. But for instance, the all even the, the new um, ones, you can listen to at only 50 centimeters distance and still have a completely coherent sound. You wouldn't do that with an S360. No, an S360 is designed for a, uh, almost a different purpose. The, the, the story behind the S360 was uh, we wanted to make something that would play really loud. Okay, it's still precise, but and it's a two-way. <coughs> it's a two-way yeah. loudspeaker. Yeah, what they share, of course, is that they're both Sam speakers, mm. the S360, and the series of the One speakers. So you've got all of the room calibration features there, which is it's pretty neat. Yeah, um, but there are, the S360 is in essence more of a long throw system, and it also has the in some cases what would be limitations of traditional speakers because the directivity in the two horizontal and vertical plane they're is different. not quite as mm. controlled as in the ones. Yeah. But they're still excellent. Listen, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The S three sixty is also a very good loudspeaker. Yeah. So any more questions? No. Well thank you very much. And don't forget to share this video with your friends, invite them to watch it. Now uh, at this event, we've got uh, we've we've got the uh, presentations that are going on. Uh, we have a we have a bar for people to talk uh, with with designers, with sales guys, with each other, and we've got three separate demo rooms. And um, what I'd like to do now is go up to the first of these demo rooms, 
It's being run by my colleague Eric. So, uh, Eric, what have you got there for us? Hi, Darren. Hi, everyone. We're streaming live from Metropolis Studio E. And in Studio E, we have installed a 7.1.4 immersive rig um, compiled with a new 8351B model in the front. So left, center, right are the new buddies in the family of the ones. Uh, we have put up the 8341 in the top layer, four of them. And behind the console, we have installed two subwoofer 7380s, real powerful, nice subwoofers. And in that room during the day, we're showing a lot of immersive content, uh, such as the usual suspects of the Dolby trailers. We have some movie trailers, but we also have some classical and jazz recording uh, done in immersive technology by an artist and engineer in Norway called Morten Lindberg. And we're happy that we can show his stuff here. And uh, we're happy about the new launches of all the products and we hope you have a good time. Thanks Eric and we are having a good time down here and we intend, intend to keep having a good time. So keep sending us your questions, your comments and we, we'll try and answer them. Oh here's one from Gina Me, if I can read that right. Will this video be available later offline? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, so you can watch it again. You can invite your friends to watch it again. Yes. Um, so, Thomas, let's, let's, let's keep talking. Um, we talked about the, the ones. Mm. Uh, of course, the other part of this is the adaptive woofer system, yes. which is uh, a low-frequency thing. Mm. Uh, low frequencies are also important, right? Sure. And it's typically, if you don't build monitors into walls, it's typically a main problem of any studio because you get cancellation effects either from the wall behind the speaker, from the floor or from anywhere. Mm. You can get reflections uh, that cancel and you cannot really correct them with normal compensation because the more you boost it, the more you cancel. The placement is really hard in rooms because of the, the modal behavior. Yes, so, yeah. exactly. So uh, this, this, of course, is going to have a negative effect on how we hear things, right? It's not going to be smooth, it's not going to be natural. No. So we are actually used to not hearing a flat frequency response mm. because it's so influenced by the room. But once we rely on a monitor for giving us a precise mirror of the conscience, so to speak, of course, it's very annoying if you have these big holes in the frequency response. So you, you, don't, you can't hear what you're doing. Or if you have boundary loading, so suddenly something is much too loud. Yeah. So you need to correct that. And that's where this adaptive woofer system has a couple of tricks that nobody else have right now. Right. And we'll, we'll get back to that in more detail with, with Aki when we talk about how the, that actually works. And we've got another question from George Oliver. Prices, of oh, course. Oh, that's your speciality, this is <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, well, as an electronic designer, there's a... Well, no, I did, I did ask about this the other day. So the prices... Um, it depends on where you're living. Uh, it, depends, it depends on where you're living because uh, the distribution channel is going to be different. Um, but for example, in Europe, we're expecting things to come in at about three and a half thousand euros each for the, the 51B, uh, just over 4,000 euros uh, for, for the 8361, and um, 7,800, 8,000 euros for the woofer stand. It's that's, a bargain. That's each. It's a bargain. <laughs> well, if you compare it to the, to the, the cost of, of building uh, monitors into a wall sure. or, or room treatment, then room. I mean, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have another question from Roderick Evanson. Will the monitors be available with Ravenna IP access as an 8430A monitor? Well, not initially. It's not in the plans right It's uh, what we're releasing now. These, these are a part of our SAM range of loudspeakers. So they've got analog and digital inputs. And they are, they are SAM speakers, so there's the GNET connectors. You can connect them to the Genelec network, and um, this allows you to do the calibration. So there's not any IP functionality in these as yet. One thing I think maybe with the woofer stand perceptually we should mention oh, yeah. is that when people are listening so much with headphones nowadays, they, they this low frequency sensation, you often cannot really hear it with your ears only, you need to feel it. And that's an extra, you could say, incentive to have something in the room which is completely flat low yeah. frequency response. Certainly it's more engaging if it you, is, can, you yeah. can, for everyone it's enjoys that kind of, you know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as I said earlier, we've got, we've got uh, three rooms here and um, 
we showed you Eric uh, with his uh, immersive setup and the next thing we'd like to do is we'd like to go and see what Anders is doing in Studio, studio B. So uh, Anders, tell us what you got. Hi Darren and everybody else, welcome to Studio B here at Metropolis Studios. We are at the moment showcasing uh, the updated uh, The Ones family. Uh, we have a couple of new really exciting products here. We are doing the 8361 and uh, we also have the new adaptive woofer system uh, W371. Uh, we are really looking forward to having you know a, a lot of people tonight. It's going to be an exciting night uh, doing you know good demos with the new products and maybe we could have a closer look you know actually at the uh, woofer system. So here you can have it's a bit hidden here behind the console but here you can see the W371 uh, complete new woofer system uh, and uh, we are actually playing that together with the uh, 8341 and the 8351 so a great add-on you know to get good control over the bass response you know in your monitoring systems. So, as I said, really exciting about this night. Uh, let's hope, you know, that everybody's go going to have a really good time tonight. Okay, back to Darren. Hi, welcome back to the live part. And we're joined <laughs> by, as you can see, the 8361A, but also we're joined by Aki Maki Virta, who is the director of R&D. So you're in a great position to now tell us, Thomas was telling us about um, perception and why point source radiators are really important. And um, perhaps you can tell me how we've made the ultimate point source loudspeaker. Yes, well, first of all, uh, it's a good idea to have a point source radiator. The challenge is how to make that, because if, if you want to have both high and low frequencies being radiated at the same position. It's kind of technically hard. Yeah. So we've kind of split the problem into three parts. The, the high and mid frequencies, we can actually build together uh, as a coaxial driver. Right. And that's what you see in the middle there. If we, if we look at this, uh, in the middle of the, the uh, directivity control waveguide, we can see uh, the coaxial driver. And let's look at this in, in the picture here. So here's the new coaxial driver design, tweeter in the middle. This tweeter actually goes to ultrasonic frequencies up to 42, 42 or 43 kilohertz. Right, that's good. And it's flat doing that. So this is really a high resolution device. Then we have uh, surrounding this uh, the mid-range section, the mid-range driver. And this is a very interesting mid-range design because we actually are driving this with, with a balanced, uh, in, a, in a balanced way so that the voice coil that you cannot see because it's under the cone here right. is meeting the cone in the middle so that all the forces uh, on the cone are in balance. Okay, so instead of pushing it from near the center as typical and, and, yes. and encouraging a sort of bending, we're, we're alleviating that problem. Yeah, and we, you get a benefit doing that. Now, now the question is, how do you integrate low frequencies into this kind of system? Right. And uh, we actually have done it so that we hide the two woofers at the top here, the other one at the bottom, and then we are radiating the fre low frequencies through these openings. So there's a pair of these and they play the exact same signal. Yes, and when you do this, then they sum together into one, one large radiator that is on the same axis with the right. mid and high frequencies. But it doesn't stop there because we have another secret behind this d device here that is no, this is pretty heavy, so I don't know well, if you want to I turn don't, this, I don't but, want to turn but there's, around. there's a base for That's another board. thing we've improved, actually, over the 8260A, isn't it? This has got heavier. Yes, bigger, well, it's easy to understand. It has uh, more, two... More two, drivers. More, more drivers, but it has two Class D amplifiers in it. It has uh, significantly more output capacity. Uh, it has basically, could, can we say, more of everything. More of everything, <laughs> and the best of everything, right? Yes, it's, um, yes. Yeah, this, 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 this shows um, not, not only our finest driver technology, but um, we've, we've got floating point DSP, we've, we've got the universal mains input voltage switch mode power supply, which is nice and easy to put into standby mode. We've got the Class D amplifiers for yes, uh, yes. really good efficiency. Um, and of course, G Gnet, it's all controllable with yeah. GLM. Yeah, 
So it becomes a very nicely integrated package, a very high output capacity. It, it's actually, well, in my opinion, able to replace many of what are typically uh, traditionally called the main monitors right. in, in many applications. Particularly when combined with the adaptive woofer system, right? Certainly at that point. Uh, but this alone has a maximum SPL of, was it 118 dB or something? Quite respectable yeah. figure. So this means that this is able to deliver uh, the dynamic range that you need uh, for monitoring over a very large range of distances. Technically, you could listen to this at a very short range and you would get perfect reproduction. So something like half a meter. And this is not possible with traditional three-way designs. No, but it's, I mean, if you distance. try and do that, that would be a very daunting <laughs> yeah. experience, I think, for many people. But it's possible. You can mm. do it. You don't have to do it. Yeah. You, you can choose any distance from the monitor. You could be listening at, say, five meters away. You would be delivered a quite respectable dynamic range. One, one challenge we have as, as electronic designers, when people sit closer to speakers that are able to play really loud, is, is, is the background noise, of course. I mean, di dynamic yeah. range is typically yeah, limited, that, but that this has away. very low self-generated noise. Yeah, this goes away. Also, your early reflection level relative to the direct sign goes down. This is, this is the fundamental idea behind near-field monitoring. But this works perfectly as a mid-field monitor, mm. where the listening distance is in the order of four to five meters. Presumably meters. helped by the, the size of the, the waveguide compared to the cabinet size. That's a, the waveguide yes. from a, typically a much bigger speaker. Able to maintain very good control of directivity. This kind of design just tends to work better than traditional designs in acoustically challenging rooms right now you touched upon uh, the um oh, we touched on the on the, the uh, woofer system for adding a extra something and 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 a main monitor feeling but the uh, tell us about the construction of that because it's not a subwoofer no definitely not because w371 is actually working to much higher frequencies it right. can work up to 500 hertz you don't have to use it to 500 hertz you you can choose you have a, a full ability to choose wherever you want to cross yeah. over to your main system and the, usually you would take the choice based on acoustical uh, uh, requirements but basically uh, what we have in W371 is two independent low frequency radiators. Right, Pilot, I think we can really say there's other. more than meets the eye because the oh, other definitely. one's on the back, right? Yes, half of that is invisible. Yeah. And, uh, it's a floor stander, so uh, it has uh, one driver, one woofer uh, facing backwards in the enclosure, the other one that you can see in that picture uh, facing towards the listener. And, and you can combine the outputs from these two woofer systems uh, in three different ways. Right. So it becomes a, a very interesting adaptive low frequency radiator. So there are three modes. So the, what, the first of these would be, for example, the complementary mode? Yes. In, in complementary mode, you take the best of all worlds. So the idea is that you first use the GLM software to find out that which of the drivers, uh, the, the two in the W371 or the one's monitor, is able to deliver certain frequencies to the listening position. And then after that, you adjust your DSP so that this happens. And the mm. end result is going to be that you here, very flat and neutral frequency response without the typical notching out of any frequencies right. that would naturally happen in your room, but because you're using the three woofers in your room in an intelligent way, then you're able to circumvent the problems okay. and just deliver very high quality Thanks. audio. Thanks. Let's hold on there. Uh, after mode one, we'll get back to the other modes in a moment, because we have a question from Tensong Repa. Uh, it says, Aki, are there 8361s using 24192D to A now, or still 2496 for the tweeters? Uh, the bandwidth through the system uh, is available up to 48 kilohertz. Uh, the tweeter has ability to work uh, the, a flat range up to 43 kilohertz, right. and then it starts rolling off. If, off if after I that. understood that right, that was a question about the sample rate inside the DSP, would yes. you agree? Yes. So which is? The, sam the sample rate inside the signal processing is 96 kilohertz. Right. And of course we can accept 192 kilohertz on, of the, on the input signal. Of course. Still. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. And this is but Facebook could, could Live. I, could Keep I still writing. say to, what was his name, the previous question? Tensong, if I remember right. Yes. 
and because he was asking about the sample rate. Yes. But maybe more importantly, we should be talking about the fact that we have a constant delay design, which Absolutely. means that all the different frequencies are taking exactly the same amount of time working their way through the uh, 8361 or 8351B and turn into acoustical output. So this means that your waveforms are preserved. Very good. And I'm really happy to see that we've got more questions. Oh, that's fantastic. So the next one is from Pietro Rossi. I loved working on the 8351As. Thank you. What did you guys change in the new 8351Bs? Ah, that's an excellent question. Absolutely. And the answer is going to be... Everything. Everything. <laughs> So it has new coaxial driver design yeah. uh, that we share also with the 8361. Yeah. It has entirely new woofer designs. It has new electronic yeah, design absolutely. that gives you four times more through. room compensation power. Uh, it has everything new. I think you could take the reflex port from an A and put it in a B. Mm, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to check that. <laughs> Anyway, these are fantastic questions. Thank you very much and, and keep them coming. This is really great. This is what we're here for. Uh, this is what makes the live uh, kind of fun because we, we really can react. So, um, right, back to the woofer system and we talked about the first of the three modes which was complementary mode and the second mode would be a constant directivity mode. Right. And that's very interesting because then you have the two woofers in the W371 working simultaneously, but they have uh, timed so that uh, they are radiating in a constant angle across the whole uh, low frequency range. And that angle is designed to be the same as the radiation angle of the one. Right. So that when you use W371 with uh, the ones monitors, then you achieve a system that is radiating constantly to the same angle. Right, and down to very low frequencies. Yeah, course. to sub 50 hertz frequencies. Excellent. And doing this is only possible if you use active uh, creation of directivity by using more than one driver at low frequencies. Right, DSP as well, of course. As well, of course. Yeah. So by taking mode two and, and rethinking it a little, we get mode three, is that correct? We do. Uh, because uh, you create directivity, which means that you increase the sound level in a certain orientation. But then you have less level in other orientations. You have reduction of level. And in mode uh, number three, where we are controlling the early reflection levels in the room, you are actually exploiting this other factor. And uh, what we do is we actually design the direction where the low levels are going to occur. We have uh, two different modes for this. Uh, one is the 90 degree mode and the other one is the 135 degree mode. Right. And uh, these actually are able to attenuate the side wall reflections and the uh, uh, reflection from the walls behind uh, the loudspeaker. So then it means that you can sort of clean out the audio by controlling the early reflections that your monitoring loudspeaker is creating when it's playing in the room. Right. So again, you are using the, the room in a clever way. Yeah. This is, uh, this is all, it's all pretty good. Ah, we got another question from Aki Alatala, and he says, is 8361 isopod the same size as 8260 head? I believe so, yes. Yep. Yes. A short answer. <laughs> and Kathleen Juven asks, will the W371 be available to use with the 8260A? Uh, that I cannot confirm at this stage, but uh, what we do promise is that uh, a W371 can be used with uh, 8341, 8351B and 8361A. That's right. Okay, so Aki, that's... That's great. It's been it's been good talking to you. I hope that you at home have enjoyed um, our, our chat about the, the the technical issues behind this. Now, um, as we said before, we're we're live, so you can send us comments and questions. And we've got three demo rooms. Uh, we've taken a look at two of them. What we'd like to do now is take you into the third room, and that would be Andy with a with a stereo system. So uh, let's go to Andy. Thanks, Darren, and welcome to the Reg Mastering Room here at Metropolis Studios London, where an insane number of hit records have been cut and mastered. And it's an ideal situation for us to show off our brand new range of, of ones monitors. Um, 
in the line up here. Um, we've got a fantastic space in which we can bring our VIP guests to check out the attributes of these new systems. Uh, we've got the 8341, 8351B, and the 8361, all accompanied by the W371 active woofer system. Um, and this setting gives us the ability to experience the low end enhancement that this system allows. Um, plus, it also really showcases the, uh, the stereo imaging abilities of the ones, which is why they've become so popular and ubiquitous in a number of different applications, whether that be for music, for post or general listening. Um, so I'd like to thank you guys for your time and we'll see you soon. Cheers, Darren. Welcome back. We've had another quick change of people and microphones. It's, uh, it's all, all happening here. And, and what, what we thought we'd be, we'd be doing now, which would be quite fun, is to talk to a couple of people that have come to our event, not just any people. We've got uh, Warren here from uh, Produce Like a Pro, which is a very popular and respected channel, which will teach you what you need to know about uh, producing. And we've How got. Much what, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that later. <laughs> and we've got one of our house engineers. Um, was it Stuart? Alex. Alex. Oh dear, there we go. That's it's live Stuart, for you. Stuart, Stuart, yeah, yeah, never mind. My so. So what I wanted to ask you guys really was, um, what do you think of what you've heard? Um, I, I, know, I know the plan and I think it works. It, it makes perfect sense. Um, when it was being described in the, in, you know, initially, I was like, it's a bold move, but the idea is to take you know, these speakers and then add to it without it sounding disconnected. And it, it does work like that, it's a huge deal. Because you know, we were talking about it with everybody in all the rooms, how even in mastering facilities, a lot of the time, you feel like there's this sort of disconnected sub that's just kind of going 20 to 40 hertz going, mm, yeah. mm, mm. and you, which is okay, but I don't want to be in a cinema room when right. I'm mixing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want you need to, more precise yeah, response I, I need to feel like it's it coming to be from smooth. the top down, yeah. covering all the frequency range, and it does work like that. And, and I know there was a lot of jokes about, you know, you in particular making a joke about not calling it a sub word for that. Because you are trying to make a point that this is adding to the speaker, mm. so it makes the sound fuller, as opposed to just adding that, hey, you want to hear my 808, you know. Um, so it works. It does work really well. The thing is, I keep saying, and I was asking people, it's like, I, you know, I want a Spike Stem or a Mark Ender or a Bob Clearmount to do a mix on these speakers. Right. Because what happened, did you notice this? When I went into one of the rooms, I'm listening to music I know. When you've got speakers with a lot of front and back in depth like these have, it doesn't sound the same. What I mean is like you're now starting to hear, well, you know, it used to be like, what can I keep putting on the snare to just bring the snare level with the vocal without it sitting on top of the vocal? Right. So you're boosting like, oh, is that too much high? And it's, you know, it, it that's the way you would mix, you know, you'd find these things. And, and there was a certain amount of depth that you could get. Now, with these, there's like, seems to be an extra couple of feet of depth. It feels like there's more front to back. And that, I remember that from the A's, let alone the right. B's. When Paul Stewart from Genelec brought them over to our studio. That was the first thing I noticed on reverb trails. It was like, and you could hear that extra, oh, it's like three feet back further mm. than it is even on my 1031s or 1032s. Um, but I want those guys, I want one of those guys that we all love to mix on it, or even, you know, sorry to throw the spanner in the works, like, hey, recall your mix. See if you can make the same decisions. Now that you can hear, you know, because you think of like the classic mixes, the Bob Clear Mountain, Woman in Chains we were listening to, just like, that's still like, mine, I mean, when you listen to that mix, you're like, how did he do that? It just sounds, it still sounds better than anything anybody's doing now, right. sorry, rest of the world. <laughs> but it does, it sounds amazing. Just think now, where he was mixing on a pair of NS10s and a sub, what he would do with that extra. Right. Depth. Actually, I was talking to a guy earlier this afternoon um, uh, who, who's, who's recorded a lot of stuff that we probably all know, and he was saying that he could uh, he could hear a lot of his mistakes now. Exactly. Um, which was nice to hear. <laughs> well, there was one track that was playing, and I was like, I'm not going to say who it was because because of, of the mixer. Um, I hated the snare, and I don't remember uh. disliking the snare, and I realised that it was, you know, there's been a hype in the high end of most speakers for the longest time. You know, we get used to a little bit of a hype. And when it's a little truer, suddenly that snare was like, oh, it's lacking a little mm. bit of bite that it had before. And also there's a bit of a move over the last, I don't know, you noticed this in the last 
maybe 10 years, two to three K is starting to really come across. Yeah. People are really pushing two to two to three K on stuff. Right. There's a lot of mastering guys that just put a little glassy two K on it. Yeah. And, and it gets adds a hardness to it, but it doesn't always translate. And, and, and you listen to something modern on speakers with good detail like these, and you're like going, ooh. Right. Why are you giving me so much 2K? That's yeah. great. I mean, it's, it's obviously made a lot of it, quite an impression on you in a short amount of time. Right. So how, how about Alex? I mean, from our point of view, we've had the, the 51s now for a couple of years, I think, in, in Metropolis. Mm. Um, and it's they, they sit in all our rooms, all our main rooms, A, B, B and C. And um, we don't just put them up for show, but the clients love them. Um, and they translate so well. And this is just the, the A's I'm talking about. I've heard the B's for the first time today. Mm. Um, but whether you're tracking or mixing, it, it kind of translates really well between both, um, and you just feel comfortable straight away. The stereo imaging has always been great, but hearing today the bees, which have a bit more power as well behind right. them, which is a, you know has lacked a little bit in the in the A's, and that's the, yeah. the one. The one well, we've heard it, I and it's been really of, nice to respond to that. Yeah, and I mean that's great. You guys have heard that and listened and, and adapted, which has been great, and that's the the one area that I would have said in the 51s is kind of letting down a little bit is just right. lacking a little bit of power especially for a commercial place like us where we're dealing with a lot of big pop artists and they want to listen loud and they want to hear the whole range um so can you hold the uh, mic a bit closer yeah of course <laughs> people want to hear yeah, exactly. it's too loud like me yeah <laughs> or, or <laughs> shout you know. um so yeah in, in that respect the the bees have been great and i and hearing is it the, is it the seven three three seven one three seven one two three seven that right um, Alphabet suit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hearing those today, uh, as Warren was was touching on, like the, the the difference between them and a traditional sub, which is just a smear of bass, and this sounded beautiful and accurate all the way down. Um, and I mean, I use the um, the fifty ones for mixing, but I'd, I'd love to get one of those in to to really help with uh, mm. with the low end. Um, and you just you trust it straight away. I mean, it, it doesn't sound overly hyped, but that's not to say it's boring either. Mm. Um, it just feels accurate. What I think of is that when people ask me that, I get, in fact, I get asked all the time. I'm sure you do as well. It's like, you know, do I need a sub? And then you have to ask them about the size of the room and all these kind of things. You know, what size speakers do they need? And because we're all so used to the idea of a sub, just kind of, you don't. I don't. I've never mixed with a sub a in now. my life. All I do is check with the sub. Yes. That's the difference. This you feel like you're actually going to mix with it. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're I actually just, right. I literally mix on whatever speakers I have, 1031s, 1032s, whatever it is, whether it's in the studio, NS10s, you name it, and then I hit the sub to check. Oh right. God, yeah. oh dear. <laughs> you know, but I don't mix with the sub on. This is a different kind of thing. I think, I think that this is making perfect sense. And of course, I'd love to, you know, the proof of the pudding in the, would be in the eating. It'd be nice to take those, that, that, those and move them from room to room because yeah. I know that you guys have spent a lot of time you know, coming up with this technology so that it reads the, the room, the environment right. as it is. Well, what was really interesting actually was how quickly it was all set up. I mean, once the speakers were in place, because that took hours, um, it looked like uh, in the morning, oh my God, we're not going to get this ready in time. And the next thing I know, it's all ready. Oh, so obviously the GLM is working, it's working pretty quickly. It went really smoothly in the end. That, for me, that's, that's a piece of kit that actually makes the whole systems. So I've done the calibration across all the four main right. rooms here, um, and they just uh, straight away it translates and it makes sense once you've done the calibration, and then you kind of you turn it on and uh, store it, and it just it just works straight yeah. away. I mean, these rooms they're obviously extremely well treated and, and sound fantastic anyway, but that little piece of kit just makes sure that the speakers you know exactly what you're listening to straight away translates really well. Oh, great. And as it happens, we got a question about GLM from Kari Ulmanen, who sounds like a Finn. Um, does or will a new GLM software support the woofer stand installation by graphical visualization? Uh, yes, it will. Um, obviously, you're going to, in the same way as you drag and drop other speakers onto your, your grid, you dra drag the uh, woofer system onto the grid and uh, you, you tell it which of the one speakers you link it with and there's a kind of a uh, green bar there and then and then they become uh, one so so yes um, it, it's handled a little bit differently than a subwoofer because it is a bit different than a subwoofer and oh Enrico is asking when will these arrive in the US 
A good question. I know when they're going to leave Finland. Um, so, so the 8351B should be shipping now or, or, or next week from, from, from Finland. And then, uh, so this is September. In October, uh, we will be shipping from East Army, Finland, the 8361. And September, October, November will be the uh, woofer system. So not tomorrow, but um, pretty soon. Thanks for the questions and keep them coming. We're still going to be here answering for a few. Oh, is the W371 similar to a cardioid base? Yes, in many ways it is. A cardioid is a, is, a, is, a, is a kind of directivity, right? Name for the shape of it. It kind of looks like a heart. So it's, it's, a, it's a controlled directivity uh, thing. And this woofer stand can be used in a mode to create um, a directivity pattern. Uh, putting sound to the front and not to the back. So yes, it is. Talk about the woofer. Guys, that's a question for you, or a, a, a request for you, I think, actually. Um, yeah, I, I, well, I think I did talk about it a little bit mm. earlier. It, in, in the demonstrations, and we chose obviously some of our own music as well, which was you know, music we were familiar with, is it does fulfill what it claims. It doesn't feel, feel separated. In some ways, it, you know, it's definitely like one plus. You, know, you, you feel the, the addition of it. What was interesting was like I like the the what's the medium size the one that's been out that's the fifty one yeah the fifty one I really like that and when the, when the, when the not subwoofer the woofer came on um, it's interesting it's like I, that's the what thing that sold me because my ears knew what what you know what what the differences would be yeah. I have a subwoofer for instance that's sitting underneath my console and it's been disconnected. Ah when we moved some stuff around and they never reconnected it. Huh. Um, and I, because I know my room and I know physically what to boost and what to cut, but I'm not hearing it. So that's, that's interesting. So this, it's, it does, so it really does speak to what the differences is going to be to actually have a woofer system as opposed to a subwoofer. I personally think subwoofers are just for checking. Like I know I yeah. said that earlier. This is a different philosophy. So, if that hopefully that explains to, to to what people want to know. But it is it's an extension. The idea that you come across works. It's it's an mm. extension of the sound, as opposed to this separate little boom box idea or whatever you want. To yeah, call it. just adding loads of extra bass. Just to kind of impress the band <coughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, sounds great. For or to clients, double check that you didn't blow up the low end. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it doesn't really. Otherwise, most subwoofers don't really serve that much of a purpose. You know. No. No. You guys, Alex, you have 1236s there in Studio B, so you're, you're well familiar with our big main yeah. monitor that you put in a, in a hole in the wall um, and beautifully treated rooms. How, how, how do you think that the, the, the adaptive woofer system and the ones might compare to that? I use those on that? stands, by the way. On stands? Oh, wow. In, in a room that was two-thirds as deep as this one. <laughs> wow. Because it was with Aerosmith and they're all... I was going to say, how, how's old. your hearing these days? <laughs> yeah, I, I wore plugs. Right. I was wearing earplugs and they're literally just that far away from you. Do you know the story? They sounded great, but geez, they're loud. You know yeah. the story behind the original 1035A uh, from 1980, which these are descended from. So the idea, the brief was that they measured the SPL at a drummer's ear and decided, right, we're going to do that. And it was something like 130 dB or something. Yeah. So there was this... this, this um, research project to to recreate that so you know bigger amplifiers double double mid ranges and all this kind of stuff the big cabinet and then then after oh, that came the 1036 and out of that came the 1236 but hmm i mean those those go loud in there it'd be interesting to see the difference i haven't actually been in there to oh, right. to hear the um well i've heard the the 371s but um I'd, I'd love to hear the difference or the compare the two systems really um i mean those those are fantastic for the clients love those when they come in and mix on them and you know doing playbacks and stuff um, not so you don't have the accuracy but they just you know you really feel it um, they're incredibly powerful um, but yeah that full the full range system um, and with the 50 ones as well um, I, I was really impressed with that um, yeah great Here's another one, which probably I think is for you guys rather than me. Have you had experience with monitors behind a perforated motion picture screen? That's from Roderick. Thank you. Uh, no, not personally. I mean, all our stuff here is you know based on traditional you know uh, recording studio builds. Um, if I mix into picture, it's it's usually a quick time inside of my screen. Yeah. You know, I, I, 
I've done a ton, like loads and loads of live DVDs. I, I recorded and mixed uh, Black Veil Brides, uh, uh, Blind Live and Burning. I did Joe Strummer Ramones, Chili Peppers. I've done loads of those, but all I usually get is a quick time. Yeah. And so uh, that's me mixing to picture. Um, and then when I have done personally stuff for um, film and TV, um, again, just quick times. Yeah, I think there are obviously guys and girls that mix for motion picture and have that experience. But my gut is, could I be wrong, that most of those people are probably mixing, already mix two tracks with tons of special effects and they're more like, a, what would you call that? It's They're less mixing console stuff. and Well, maybe they're on a console, but they're, they're probably got 40 different elements that mm. they're balancing with and the two track of, of, of music is probably already yeah. Yeah. blended or sometimes I know um, I know Junkie XL pretty well and he 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 is always asked to provide stem so they're probably mixing yeah. stem mixes at that stage and what, what comes to my wrong. mind when we talk about perforated screens is, is the question if you know X curves and whatever so right. um, and what I would say is that all general like Sam speak is you've not only got the, the, the GLM autocad which puts it flat but now that nowadays we have a with a feature in there so that you can kind of create custom profiles. Yes. In fact, there's, there's ready right. X-curve, modified X-curve profiles, I think, I don't remember exactly. And you can also create your own one. So um, actually you could tilt it so that it shouldn't be an issue. Hmm. Which is well, yeah, yeah, having used that software, and like I say, when we installed the mains in, in B here, um, one of the big things for us when installing any kind of main speakers is how they react to soffit mounted um, environments we have we have other mains here which kind of don't do so well mm. and a better kind of uh, floor standing um, but the great thing about having the the Genelex in there was the ability to go in and that's that was a, a really delicate kind of operation when we refurb studio B and, and introduced those mains because there was a you know there's some great records and it been mixed in that room mm. and it's a great mixing room and a lot of history in there and we had to be so careful to try and do that justice and recreate that and I know you guys were very kind of keen on um, making sure that was done properly and worked with us to kind of uh, use the GL, GLM software to try and recreate that and get that room sounding exactly right so the possibilities I mean uh, it's slightly different with the perforated you know, um, screen but it's you know being able to um, really go in and, and change the sound of those speakers is a great a great feature yeah marvellous um, I don't have any more questions for you guys, but I, I, at this point, I'd really like to thank you. Thank you for, for hosting us. Thank you for traveling all this way. And, it was um, fun. Oh, pleasure. Yeah, I hope you've had a really good time. So um, thanks very much to everybody who's, who's been watching. And um, you can still send us uh, questions and comments. We'll get back to you afterwards in, in, in our comments. Uh, please like and share the video with your friends and check out the website, genelec.com slash the ones. And uh, until the... Uh, until the next live stream or, or, or video, good night.